would be wrong with covering this splendid structure with a lovely coat of green, may I ask? <laughs> that sure be something to see, all right, Jester. A green barn. Well, then, if we agree, why don't I take all of this hideous red stuff back to the store and exchange it? Well, for two very good reasons. Number one, I don't want to scare the animals half to death. And number two, I'm halfway finished now. <laughs> well, it goes against my better judgment, but I'll see it through. It's mighty fine of your horse to let me earn a few extra dollars this way from a little Jenny. Well, it'll help pay some of the doctor's bills anyhow, won't it? Ah, it sure will. You're a saint, horse, a true saint. What with your assistance, plus delivering for the store and handling the mail, I can just about make ends meet. Speaking of the mail, have you delivered to Paul yet? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I forgot it again. It's in his back pocket. Well, Dad, oh, Bernie, you better get it in there. He's going to have a hiss. It's yeah, the third I... time this week. And on the way. Yeah. Go through the kitchen. Old Hop Sings has got a great big apple cobbler in there for Jimmy. Oh, thank you, thank you, horse. Here you are. Yeah. Don't you, boy? You <laughs> sure do, Annie. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, anything we can do for you? Yeah, I'm looking for Hoss Cartwright. Oh, is he expecting you? Oh, he sure is expecting me. I'm Annie Slocum. How do you do? And these are my brothers, Brother Jed and Brother Ned. Oh, howdy. Mr. Slocum. How are you? It's a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Ben Cartwright. This is my son, Joseph. Uh, where is your brother? Uh, last time I saw him, he was painting a barn. Oh, oh, there, a uh, horse. There you are. Oh, oh, wee, handsome, as handsome, ain't he, boy? He don't look too bad, Annie. <laughs> He's better looking in person. Uh, horse, these people have come to see you. I'm Annie, Sugar Plum. These here's my brothers, Jed and Ned. You'll say howdy, boys. Howdy. 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 Uh, is there something I can do for you? Something he can do for you? He's a real funny glute, ain't he, Annie? Well, sure is. Seeing how I come all the way from Cane Tuck just to get hitched to him. Well, I'm right in the middle of painting. Hitched! <laughs> I think we just sat down and made ourselves comfortable. Oh, we'll talk this over and <laughs> talk this oh, over in a. Uh... <laughs> drink of some sort? Oh, that's yeah. Very fine. Thank you. Joseph, would you get the lemonade, please? Uh, yes, never mind. Home. You just stay right where you are, Joseph. We'll get the lemonade. Hoo-wee! My, this 
is a pretty house. Ah, Sugar Plum, is this the honeymoon nest you wrote me about? Sugar Plum. Now, look here, ma'am. I ain't never wrote you nothing about nothing. There's been some sort of mistake somewhere along the line. Well, of course you wrote her. Sis saved all them letters. Oh, uh, you, uh, you have some letters? I certainly have. Right there in that traveling bag. Uh, I'd like to see those, if I may. Them's private. Between Sugar Plum and me. Ain't no stranger gonna see those letters. This ain't no stranger. This here's my paw. Appears to me like somebody's trying to weasel their way out of something. After we spent every last cent we got it getting out here. I'd say we've been slickered. Now, wait just a minute. Now, first of all, put those guns down. Now, just, just set them down. Yeah. Now, right, you've been boys. saying some things here about my son. Joseph, would you get the lemonade? Oh, the yeah, lemonade. Yeah. Now, I hope you can back up those statements you've been making. <laughs> oh, that horse. Oh. <laughs> Chester, since when have you been taking a stealing pies? Oh, no, no, little Joe. This is my own apple cobbler that Hop Singh made for my little Jenny. Bless her heart. Oh. <laughs> sure, then, where are you sneaking around here like a little elf? Sure, and that would be my own business, Mr. Cartwright. I told you, I saw his advertisement in the matrimony paper where he asked that any widow who wanted to get married to write him. Ma'am, I ain't never advertised nothing. Ain't that right, Paul? Oh, sugar plum, how could you? Oh, miss, miss Annie. Oh, oh. you can see for yourself. And, and this one, he asked me to marry him. And in this one, he sent me his picture. And in this one, he tells me he's a rich rancher. And the Ponderosa is going to be our honeymoon cottage. It sure does look like horse with that prize hog of his. Hmm. But Paul, that ain't even... That ain't even my handwriting. And I guess you're going to tell me that that ain't no picture of you hugging that hog, neither. Oh, sugar plum. I never thought you could do this to me. They ain't nobody gonna jail our little Annie and get away with it. Well, what are we gonna do with this here black beard? The blue, blue beard. I don't care what color his whiskers is. There's gonna be a wedding just like we planned, or somebody's gonna get sued from here to kingdom come. There's laws against jilting helpless widows. Wait a minute, there's gonna be a wedding just like we planned. You bet you there's gonna be a wedding. Somebody answer the door. Somebody answer the door. Excuse me, I'll do it myself. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, pardon, monsieur. Perhaps I was misinformed in the village. Is this not the uh, chateau of... Bootsy! Uh... Oh, mon chéri, my beautiful Bootsy, mon chateau. Oh, you oh, you your perfume paws off my man, you feather bag. Jezebel, insolent peasant! How dare you insult Yvette? Go back to your housework. Housework, ladies! No, I'll ladies. show you some housework. You, you, you overpainted, pie-faced, calculating. I get. La ladies, 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 ladies! Dignity, 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 please. Lemonade. Oh. Tell you, Hoss, according to Lawyer Minton, both those ladies got a good case against you. They decided to take you into court. According to the evidence, all supports their story. You know, from the point of view of the legalities and the standpoint of the jury, they got a good case against you. So then, so about the only chance I got is to find the A who it really wrote them dad burn letters, ain't it? That's about it, Hoss. Well, I better get inside and order all this stuff our guests wanted. Quite a list, huh? Look, Paul, maybe I'll see you at Twilight. I think I'll go over at the saloon and get me a bunch of beer. Oh, no, no, I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to the Ponderosa, make sure those two females don't tear that place apart room by room. Now move. But get going. Poopsie. <laughs> oh, man. Howdy, Ben. What can I do for you? Hey, Matt, you wouldn't have any truffles, would you? 
<laughs> ben, I got all kinds of troubles. No, not troubles, Matt. I got plenty of those myself. No, the truffles. Truffles. Truffles? Yeah, something to eat. Never heard of them. What are they like? Well, uh, the, the, it's a, uh, well, never mind. How about escargot? Escar what? Escargot. Well, that's French for snails. Now, I know you're joking. No, I wish I was. Well, I got a house full of people at the Ponderosa State. Yeah, news travels fast, Ben. Yeah, bad news. Well, anyway, one of them's a young French woman, Miss Truffles and Snails. That was her idea. Trying to get at a man through his stomach. You ain't saying horse is going to eat snails, are you, Ben? Well, you can't insult your guests. Under those conditions, I'd be willing to try. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't blame you. If... <laughs> Oh, listen, I've been meaning to ask you. Uh, you handle all the mail that comes through here, don't you? Most of the time. Or sometimes Jester does. Oh, uh, well, do you remember any mail going through here with uh, these names on it, like uh, Yvette Devereaux, New Orleans? Nope. Hmm. How about Annie Slocum, Kentucky? Don't guess I do. Wouldn't be likely to forget them names either. No, I guess not. Well, I'll, uh, I'll talk to Jester about him. Didn't come to work today. Uh, Jenny's sick again. Oh, sorry to hear that. I guess Jester be at the house, huh? Well, listen, he's out scrounging himself up some other work somewhere on my time. Things I don't know about it that Killarney Road bended. <laughs> well, good luck to Hoss. May the best gal win. Oh, don't say that too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, uh, you uh, make out the rest of that list. I'll accept them. Truffles and snails. I'll be back in a little while. All right, Ben. Snails. <laughs> Jenny, darling, please. The doctor only wants to help you. Don't want no smelly old doctor. Send him away. Oh, now, honey, look. Don't make me break the door down. <coughs> She's having an attack, Jester. Yeah. I'll have to get to her pretty soon. I don't want no smelly old doctor. Send him away. Well, Jester, I guess that's it. No use hanging around since Jenny's not going to open that door. I'll be going now. Hey, yes, Doctor. <laughs> goodbye. And a goodbye to you, Doctor. Is he gone? Well, <laughs> Come on now, Come Jenny. On now. Hey, Come on now. In the bed, you know, before she has another attack. In the bed, you go there. Now, Jenny, Jenny, darling, you're going oh, to take this so good medicine. Are you ready, all, Doctor? No. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> sure. Just remember to give her a half a teaspoonful of this every couple of hours. Ah, uh, that I will, Doctor. You go to sleep. You sleep. She'll be all right, won't she, Doctor? For now, Jester. She's not responding. In fact, she's succeeding in making herself even worse and is developing signs of asthma, which could become really serious in time. Well, you get her the best medicines you can. I'll find the money to pay for them somehow. Jester, you know and I know that the best medicine for Jenny would be a mother. A real mother. Not an imaginary one, not a memory. I had a notion, a dream, a wild dream. But I never counted on the fatal charm of that Haas Cartwright. And now it has destroyed my best laid plans. What in the world are you talking about, Jester? What's Haas Cartwright got to do with you? There's no earthly use discussing it. I've lost my last, my most desperate bid for the happiness of my tiny tot, my lovely Jenny. <coughs> Oh, Jenny, oh, 
Jenny, now, please, now, Jenny. Please. She's as pixelated as you are, Jester. Get that child in bed. I've got to go now. I must be seven calls behind by now. Yes, Doctor. I am dying, Daddy, oh. dying. He's given me poison. <laughs> oh, Jenny. I'll be by again tomorrow. Well, uh, thank you kindly, Doctor. You gotta save me. That French girl, she's dangerous. <laughs> you know, I don't know what you got that these women want, but whatever it is, Hoss, you ought to bottle it and sell it. Oh, let's see. Joe, Ooh, you're my brother. You gotta help me. Boy. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, you bad, bad boy. Oh, mon chéri, il est oh, si joli. Si adorable, vraiment. Regarde ses beaux yeux. Oh, et bien. Oh! Uh-oh. Why, you paint a pile of French pastry! I warned you to keep your hands off my husband-to-be! Your husband-to-be! You can't fed Amazon, you... <laughs> you can't fed Amazon! You ah! can't fed Amazon, eh? Why, well, I'll slug you so hard that sky will be raining feathers! <laughs> oh! I got it! Oh, let me get her! Come here! Let me, let me go! Let me go! I got the... Excuse me, Poopsie. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Libby Spenceville. Libby Spenceville, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, let, let me guess. You're looking for Hoss Cartwright. Yes. My fiance. Oh, what a magnificent house. Oh, we should have a simply glorious wedding. like that. I didn't want that big old doctor around, Daddy. I want you to stay with me always. Oh, my poor baby. I tried being mother and father to you, and I failed you in both. I had a real mommy once, didn't I, Daddy? That you did, darling. My mommy. Tell me again about my mommy, please. She was the dearest, loveliest spirit the good Lord ever put inside a body. And I loved her so much. And so it was she chose me that together we could have a lovely, sweet little girl. Was that little girl me? Yes, dear heart, it was you. It was you, Jenny. to see Jenny? Yeah, poor child. I don't know which is worse, her asthma or her need for a mother's care. Yeah, I, I can't understand why Jester doesn't get married again. I've tried to talk him into it, Ben, believe me, but you know Jester. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why, just a little while ago, he was babbling some nonsense about some wild scheme and about Hoss's charm having destroyed his plans. What, what, what did you say? He said Hoss's charms had destroyed his plans? Yeah, he said he didn't have a chance against Hoss's charms. Guess you didn't know that you'd spawned a real charmer, did you, Ben? <laughs> ah, no, I sure didn't, but I'm just beginning to find out. So that's what this is all about. I swear it must be the weather. 
Now you're talking just as mysterious as Jester himself. Well, I gotta be off. So long. Yeah, so long, Doc. And thanks. Thanks. Come in. Well, thank you, Jester. It's good to see you. Oh, say, I just passed the doctor. I'm sorry to hear about Jenny. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. She's feeling better, sound oh, asleep. Good, good. But it's very considerate of you to come asking about her, and I thank you for it. <laughs> I'll get you the coffee. Oh, uh, listen, I, I came here to see you. Huh? How about some letters? Letters? What letters would you be meaning, Mr. Cartwright? Well, strange thing. It seems that somebody has been forging Haas's name to some letters and oh, having them postmarked Virginia City. That's against the law. A body could go to jail for that. Yes, yes, I'm aware of that. You wouldn't uh, know anything about them, would you? Me, Mr. Cartwright? You see, you and Matt are the only two handling the mail, and uh, I knew it wasn't Matt, so I thought perhaps it might be you. Yes. Now, try to remember something. See, I... these letters were written to two different women. Oh. Now, see if these names mean anything to you. Yes, yes, of course. Annie Slocum. Annie Slocum? Yes. Annie Slocum. And the other one is Yvette Devereaux. Yvette Devereaux, huh? Now, those names should be kind of easy to remember, don't you think? It's coming back to me, Mr. Cartwright. It's coming back to me. I remember now he was a stranger that mailed him. Yes, sir. Sure enough, I'm beginning to see him now. Fleshy dressed with a fancy fist. I'd say a gambling man. And he posted those letters. Yeah, that's right. A fleshy dressed gambling man. Well, that explains how the letters were posted. Then. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, what do you think happened to the letters that the ladies sent to Haas? Oh, yes, oh, yes. The you... letters the ladies sent to Haas. Yes, you see, oh, yes. those ladies answered Haas's letters. Oh, yes. And uh, they must have gone through the post office, except that uh, Haas never received them. Oh, yes. Now, what do you think happened to them? What do you think happened to them now? Oh, yes, what happened to them? Well, maybe they was lost. Yeah, uh, maybe, uh, maybe they were stolen. All of them? It don't hold water, do it? Oh, well. Of course, it, it really, it really isn't, uh, it really isn't your fault, is it? It's not? No, of course not. Oh? You were hired as a postal employee, not as a detective. Oh, sure now, and that's a fact, sir. Now, you could really be of great help to me if you wanted to be. And how could I be that? By helping me prove my theory. Oh, yes. Uh, and what might that be, sir? It could be that Hoss, my son Hoss, in an impassioned moment, wrote those letters, ah. and then had this mysterious gambler mail them for him. Ah. Or it could be that little Joe wrote those letters as a joke on Haas. Oh, glory be! In either case, <laughs> you will help me, won't you? I certainly will, sir. How? By coming to the Ponderosa and being with my guests. You'll bring Jenny, of course. And while you're there... I'll observe for suspicious moves. Exactly, exactly. Yes, now you're thinking, yes, Jester, sir. now you're thinking. <laughs> I can't tell you how greatly relieved I am to find that your thinking of this matter so exactly coincides with mine. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> well, now, how about that coffee, huh? Well, now, that's a wonderful <laughs> idea. Uh, there you are, <laughs> sir. Nice hot coffee. I keep it on the stool. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Joe, 
I don't think your brother's gonna appreciate you laughing like that. Oh, I can't help it, Pie. Looks like a young rooster with a whole flock of pullets. <laughs> hey, Jester, how you doing? And a good day to you, little Joe. Good. Oh, and how's my little Jenny? You miss me, baby? Little Joe, Haas did look funny. <laughs> why was that lady chasing him? Uh, well, why, why was the lady chasing him? But they were playing a little kind of a game of tag, Jenny. Boss! Boss! You naughty boy! Where are you hiding? Boss, dear! Where are you? Who's that? Hmm? Oh, that, that's Libby Spenceville. She checked in while you were in town. She's from New England. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Not another. Oh, yeah. She's elevating horses' mentality. Teaching them about, oh, things like Chaucer and New England history, that sort of thing, so they'll be compatible when they get married. In the meantime, Big Annie Slocum's fixed about four messes of possum for horse. I never thought I'd see my brother turn green at the dinner table. Even hide in the barn till Yvette found him. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, have seen going to quit. Chester. Mm, it's a big day. I leaving today, no, unless this foreign lady go back to Kentucky. Mr. Cartwright, this man has got to go. He is constantly underfoot in my kitchen. Now, her kitchen? In my kitchen. I just caught him trying to put a dirty old bird's nest in my soup for horse. Hmm. Scat. No wonder poor Sugar Plum eats like a bird. Like a bird? Who are they? Oh, uh, Annie Slocum. This is Mr. Jester McGillicuddy. They're glad to make your acquaintance, Mum. Howdy. And uh, Miss Jenny McGillicuddy. Jenny, say hello to the lady. I'd rather not. Oh, so you'd rather not, eh? Oh, in Kane Tuck, I'd know how to peel a little turnip like you. Oh! Jenny! Shame on you, girl. Shame on you. What'll Miss Annie think? I think I'll be needing some help in the kitchen with my vegetable cutting. Come on, young lady. I think I'm going to be short of breath, Daddy. I think I'm going to be sick. We Kentucky folks have a cure for what ails her. It's called work. Uh, well, help! the day. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, do you think that my Jenny is safe with that woman? Well, uh, I tell you, Jess, it seems to me that uh, Annie's medicine might be just the right thing for her. Oh. oh. Hoss, what are you? I've been up there in my room. Where's them gals? Outside getting some air. What are you skulking around like this for? Well, Dad burned it, Paul, between Miss Yvette and her truffles and snails and, and Ned and Jed and their mess of possums and, and Miss Libby cramming all that fancy bookwork down my brain. I'm, I'm about to blow a cork. Yeah, I've, I've been giving this problem of yours a bit of consideration, son. You have three brides. And one very reluctant bridegroom. That's not very good odds. Unless... Unless what? You got him, Eddie? Well, I, I just might have, son. Weren't you and little Joe gonna play poker over at Will Parker's tonight? Yeah, I was gonna. Hoss, I think you just ought to go over there and play poker. And uh, make sure you go through the kitchen. All right. Paul, I want to be dependent on you. Good evening. Good evening, Monsieur. Ladies, the 
a lovely night. <sighs> lovely music. How lonely it sounds. A couple of nice boys, Ned and Jed. Nice boys. It's strange how people can show their loneliness to their music. And you'd never know. Those boys have hearts as big as potato sacks, but lonely as a desert night. Poor boys. Poor boys. What'll they do when Annie leaves them? How they'll miss the soft touch of a woman in their life. Poor boys. So lonely. Just like me. Nobody wants me. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that, no, sir. <laughs> Why, do you know that I heard the Slocum boys saying that... Well, I... I guess I can tell you. Well, I, I heard them Slocum boys say that... Uh, that you and Miss Libby here were two real beauties. Oh, there are a lot of fish in the ocean. You know that son, horse of mine? Well, he never did know a pretty woman when he saw one. Did they? The Slocum boys, did they really say that we... Well, they, they never come right out blunt-like and say that, uh, let me tell you about those two boys. Underneath those rough exteriors beat two hearts of gold. Yes, ma'am, two hearts of gold. It's time for me to be turning in. Good night, ladies. Pleasant Good night. dreams. Most well, Mr. Godhide. It is lovely music, isn't it? Divine, one might say. Poor boys, they do sound lonely. Do they not? Terribly. That's pretty. Yeah. Hey, Ned, look at them stars. Like wildflowers on fire, ain't they? Pretty, all right. Kind of reminds me of old Kentuck. The moon's just like a big old lantern. You homesick, Ned? Kinda, I guess. Well, this is mighty fine country. Feller could set his roots down if he put his mind to it. Yeah, and, and come spring, planting some corn and hoeing it and watching it grow. Maybe building a little old still out back. <laughs> Making us up a big old batch of that pure golden. Good old Mountain Dew. <sighs> Mountain Dew. Wouldn't that be something? That sure would be something. Makes my old mouth water just thinking about it. <laughs> Makes me kind of lonely just saying them words. Mountain Dew. Good old Mountain Dew. Oh, now that's enough of that stuff for one night. Oh, aren't you going to play just a bit more? Uh, how long you two she-males been standing there? Just a few minutes. But we just love your music. It is, well, how shall I say, very romantic. Let's get out of here, brother. Why, if I didn't know better, I'd think you gentlemen didn't like us. I think they do like us, but they are afraid. Aren't you, mon chéri? Afraid of a woman? Well, maybe Frenchman is afraid of women, but not us mountain men. Oh, Frenchman never runs from a lovely woman. Never. Or don't you think we are lovely? Well, you, you, you're passable, I reckon. And am I... Possible? P 
Passable, ma'am, passable. Is there a difference? As you would say, viva la différence. <laughs> hey, Brother Ned, I think they're talking in some language I don't rightly understand. We are talking the language of love. Love? <laughs> I, I could love my mule and my squirrel gun, but I reckon that's about all. Don't forget that sour mash, Brother. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> oh, poor things. You will have to be taught. Taught? <laughs> oh, pardon, monsieur. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. I just... Well, I did not see you. I, I didn't see you neither. I, I was just uh, poking along and thinking about... Last night, uh, down by the corral. Uh, uh, I was also thinking. That's funny, both us thinking at once. Y you know, I think all the time, nearly. And, and sometimes I think about the doggonest things. Really? Oh, yeah. You know, once I was walking along, and suddenly I commenced to thinking about how I'd like to just peel off my boots and, and, and run in the mud, just like a little old kid. And did you? Sure did, just like that. How thrilling to be so impulsive. Impulsive? I, I, I ain't scared of nothing that walks or swims or crawls. Not even girls? Well, I... I just... Oh, you do not seem afraid of me. Well, I, I reckon I forgot that you was a girl just oh, for a minute. You're just saying that. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, Miss Yvette, I ain't. Well, if it wasn't for that horse cart, right, I'd... Oh, I'd... You do what, Monsieur Slocum? Well, I'd... I'd... Monsieur Slocum. Are you fond of escargot? Escargot? Well, seeing I ain't never met him, it'd be hard to say yes or no, ma'am. <laughs> you silly boy. <laughs> have you any body told you you have a delightful sense of humor? Let's talk about New Orleans. Have you ever been there, mon chéri? Of course, I never did see what you gals saw in that horse anyhow. Except he was big and rich and handsome. <laughs> Which any fellow could be if he'd set his mind to it. <laughs> what you been reading, the cookbook? Uh, why, no, it's Mr. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Don't you think he's divine? Is he Yankee or South? Well, I imagine he'd be classified a Yankee. I don't like him, then. Oh? Have you read him, Mr. Slocum? No. I ain't ever met him. Of course, I, I ain't got nothing against Yankee shemales. Naturally, I hate men Yankees more than I hate potato bugs. Mr. Slocum, now what quarrel could you possibly have with this beautiful passage? Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Terribly sorry. I... Well, I, I, I'll own for a Yankee, it ain't bad. I reckon I'm pretty dumb. I ain't had no time for schooling. While Sister Annie was growing up, me and Brother Ned had to work on the farm, uh, us being just orphans. And you sacrificed yourself for her. Oh, how noble, how inspired. Why, Mr. Slocum, Jed, makes me want to cry. Oh, oh, well, I, I was just... Oh, there's beauty in your soul, Jed. There is? I knew it from the very first moment I saw you. But I was blind. You were? Blinded by selfishness, thinking only of myself, tossing myself shamelessly at Hoss Cartwright without a thought to... T to me? Precisely. Oh, dearest Jed. You must read. You must learn to read. 
You must let me guide you. As Lady Beatrice guided Dante through the wonders which lie before us. You really think you could learn a dumb mule like me to read and write? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, dear Jed. Oh, Miss Libby. I see in you the soul of a rural poet. A southern Henry Longfellow, perchance, awaiting its redemption from the depths of darkness to burst forth brilliantly into the lights of literary skies. You see all them things in me? Oh, yes. Gee, Willikers. Be careful. Oh, be careful. You hurt somebody. Oh, they my dishes. I won't peel any more potatoes. I won't. I won't. Oh, yes, you will. I hate you. You're just a mean old lady. You spanked me. I warned you what would happen if you pulled out that slingshot again. Jenny. Daddy, Daddy, oh. save me. I she can't breathe while she sure can't holler. The child suffers from asthma, Miss Annie. The doctor the says... The doctors? What do they know about kids anyway? Now, look, Miss Annie... Now, they... Mr. Cartwright, I might not be too smart about a lot of things, but I was a child once myself, and I know a sure fire cure for that little hellion. Kentucky-style cure, that is. Well, Hoss, stop gaping. Pick up that child, take it upstairs to the bedroom. And as for you, you just stay put. Well, this now... is woman's work. Glory be. Ooh. She's quite a woman. She ain't no whaling banshee. No, she ain't. <laughs> uh, just set it right over here on this bed. Yes, sir. And I'm going to need some red flannel. And uh, show me where the medicine is kept. Yep. I'd got, I'll take care oh, of it. Ma'am, the medicine's over there under that wash basin. Oh, right right the no only flannel I got is over there in them, in them drawers in the dresser. Cool. I'll, I'll get it. Don't just stand there. You're in the way. Yes, get out. Wait. Now you sit still here. You're going to have an attack. Let's go right ahead. I hate you. I hate you. Let me go. Let me go. Boy, Paul, that, that Kentucky gal is sure determined. Yeah. Yeah. So is Jenny. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I wonder if you'd care to accompany me upstairs for a peep at the proceedings? Uh, you, uh... You a little scared of Annie? Well, now, it ain't Annie and it ain't Jenny, but the two of them makes a mighty earthquake. She's murdering me! She's murdered me, poor child! Glory be. Well, come in, Mr. McGillicuddy. Are you all right, Jenny, darling? Now, why shouldn't she be all right? Since when has a warm bed and a good rub down done a child any harm? Mm. What this child needs is love. A mother's love. I've been given that very idea a bit of serious consideration of late. <laughs> well, have you now, Mr. McGillicott? Things have sure simmered down upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. Hey, pull a horse! Hey! Take a look at this. And where'd you find this? Found it on the bunkhouse door. Horse, listen to this. Dear horse, little Joe, and Mr. Cartwright, please forgive us for going like this, but it could not be helped. Jed and Ned need us more than horse ever will, and we've discovered we need them. Please don't worry about your double-seated buckboard as we shall return it after the wedding. Your friends forever, Yvette and Libby. Hot dogs ain't pouring. I'm a free man. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, come here. There's more. <laughs> we all hope Annie and Horse will be very, very happy. <laughs> well, Rome wasn't built in a day. It ain't Rome I'm worried about, it's me. Gentlemen, 
I'm uh, sure we're all agreed that motherhood is an indispensable and noble role. Don't make a speech, just tell him. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright, horse, every child, like my little dear Jenny, needs a mother. Yes, yes, a proper mother. Exactly, sir. Someone who would love and cherish her as, as you do. Um, my very own thoughts, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking of, actually, Annie and, and Horse could learn to love and cherish Jenny. That is, if she's, uh, if she's up for adoption. Adopt? Well, uh, that's not exactly what I had in view now. Uh, of course, certainly, Horse is... Well, he's a, he's a fetching and a fascinating fellow. Muscular, handsome, and quite a brain, too, I might say. But I... I've never dared hope to... What he's trying to say is that, uh, well, I can't marry Horse. You can't? You can't marry Horse? Nope. No, because, uh, I'm, uh, I I'm gonna marry him. You see, this funny little Irish fella, he, uh, well, he really needs me. And, well, so does that sweet little Jenny. So, uh, well, you understand, don't you, horse? Well, I'll tell you, Miss Annie, it ain't gonna be easy. But, doggone it, the best man won, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Hoss. Congratulations. My goodness, yes. And my very yeah, best wishes to you. We're going to have a wedding at the Ponderosa after all. That bird, and I'm going to give the bride's away. All of them. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Snuckins! <laughs> Mister, aren't you glad to see me? Well, mister, I'm glad to see somebody. Hey, Sonny, rust out of this, Sonny. Rust out. Name is Cartwright, Ponderosa Ranch. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm Jesse Pearson. Yes, now, uh, let's have a look at this. I'll tell you the last time I try a shortcut without testing it out first. I figure with, we can get the team off of your wagon, hitch them up with mine. We you gotta... want me for something, Jesse? Oh, Sonny, this is Mr. Ben Cartwright, my partner, Sonny. Sonny? You know, Mr. Cartwright, I don't think we'll have to unhitch our team. Here, Sonny, come down here. That's it. Come along now. Now, you get right over there and get a good grip on it right there. Well, well you, you're, you're not going to have he, he He'll try. Now, Sonny, slow and steady. Just lift it straight up. Anytime you're ready, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah! 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 Boom! He's sure a powerful young fellow, isn't he? Yes, he is. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you. 
Is there something I can do for you, fellas? Can you give us something to eat? Uh, you'll have to forgive Sonny's directness, Mr. Cartwright, but it's hard to remember manners when one is hungry, and yeah, the truth of the matter is who uh, we are. Well, I'll tell you what you two fellas are going to do, you and Sonny. You're going to get in that wagon of yours, you're going to follow me right back to the Ponderosa, because you're going to have supper with my sons and me, and you're going to have a fine supper, too. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Cartwright. Follow me. <laughs> right, oh, we'll be as close to you as your shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been making the rounds from ranch to ranch, looking for work. Wranglers, farm hands, odd jobs, uh, anything at all, you know. Well, you know, it's a pretty tough time of year to get any work. With Brandon over and harvest not for another couple of months. Sure ain't gonna be easy. Yes. Well, Sonny and I never let a temporary streak of hard luck get us down, do we, Sonny? That's right, Jesse. Uh, excuse me, are, are you two related? Well, uh, not in the flesh, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, certainly in spirit. We first met uh, some time back when we were both traveling with a carnival in the East. We sort of hit it off together, and, well, we've traveled like kinfolk ever since. Carnival, circuses, sideshows. Yes, we've seen every small town across this wide country of ours, haven't we, Sonny? Yeah. Jesse looks after me, and I look after Jesse. Yes, that's right. Uh, birds of a feather. Flock together. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that sounds like a pretty exciting life, though, traveling around like that. Uh, very exciting. Yes, yeah, but, uh, well, we, we've decided that we've had enough of it. Uh, and, and we're going to go to Oregon, and we're going to live off salmon for the rest of our lives. Uh, just salmon? Well, Sonny became fascinated with salmon when I told him how they swim up waterfalls. I don't blame you, Sonny. It kind of fascinates me, too. Yeah, we didn't like the carnival anymore. And we're going to go up there, and we're going to live all by ourselves, just Jesse and me. And there ain't nobody that's going to bother us no more. Why, well, I, I think it's time we spread up. Bedroll, Sonny, that is if Mr. Cartwright doesn't mind us camping on his place tonight. Well, not at all, but like I said, there's plenty of room inside. Uh, hey, no, thanks. We'd be much happier under the stars. So if you'll excuse us, we'll bid you all a fond good night. And thank you again for a marvelous supper. Oh, you're more than welcome. Mr. Jesse? Can I thank him, too? Why, certainly, Sonny. You go right ahead. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Your hat, Sonny. Good night, now. Good night. We mortals live but for the day, and with bellies full and company good, let the morrow take care of itself. What is it the Persian says about life, Sonny? Unborn tomorrow. Dead yesterday. Good. Why fret about them while life be sweet today? What does that mean, Sonny? Well... That means that we, we don't bother ourselves about uh, what's gone and, and past. And we don't fret about what's going to happen in the future. Because we like it just fine with what we've got right now. Very good, Sonny. Very. <laughs> oh, he remembers everything I tell him. <laughs> well, you're giving some beautiful things to remember. Yeah, thank hey, you. you boys have been pretty busy, haven't you? You didn't have to chop up all this wood. Well, your cook was kind enough to supply us with an early breakfast, and Sonny and I were just returning the favor. Well, that's awful nice of you. Morning. Joe? One of the hands just told me Dal Brightman's got a string of new horses over at his place. I thought he might need a couple of hands to help him around the stable. Well, we certainly could use the job. Well, I just want to let you know. I got to get back to work. Take care. Thanks. Hey, that's an idea. It's an idea. Listen, I'm going into town a little while, do some banking. 
Why did I take you two fellows along and introduce you to Daryl? <laughs> Splendid. Uh, but um, would it uh, be all right if uh, Sonny waited here while you and I rode in? Jesse, can I go with you? <laughs> I'm just going in to talk to the man about it, Sonny. That's all. Mr. Cartwright, uh, could... Um... Oh, horse! Horse, come on over here. <clears throat> uh, horse. Horse is a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty day. It's a beautiful day for fishing, isn't it? Fishing? Yes. And Sonny loves to fish. Uh, would you mind taking him along? Mind? Of course he wouldn't mind. Oh. <laughs> Give me a chance to show old Sonny around a little bit, too, huh? Good. Jesse, can I go with you? No, I'm only just going to talk to the man, Sonny. And you know, there's nothing I like better than fresh-caught trout. You suppose you could catch me a, a, a big one for lunch, Sonny? You bet I can, Jesse. I'll, I'll catch you the biggest old trout you ever did see. Good. Now, listen carefully, Sonny. While I'm gone, you do what Horse tells you. You listen to him just like it was me telling you. Yeah, I understand? Sure, Jesse. Good. Uh, Jesse, how long are you gonna be gone? I'll be back before you even know I'm gone. <laughs> Come on, Sonny. Let's go keep them trout waiting. Let's go get the pole. Bunch, all right. You know, in fact, the drover I bought him from, he was mighty glad to get shed of him. Well, that uh, Palomino does seem a bit antisocial, but, well, you can't judge a book by the cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to do a favor for a friend of Ben's, but, well, the only work I got is wrecking these Bronx. Tell you the truth, uh, you look a little light for the job. Well, Mr. Brightman, after all, it's not so much a matter of brawn as ability, and I've been around horses all my life. In fact, my mother used to say that I could whinny before I could talk. And by the time I was 16, I could ride a horse standing on my head. On your head? Yes. That's where you're liable to wind up, right there on your head. Well, uh, Mr. Brightman, after all, every man is entitled to a chance to prove himself, and that's what I'm asking for, that chance. <laughs> And you know, Mr. Brightman, the Constitution of these United States specifically says that all men are created equal and that each is endowed by his creator. All right. You're going to talk my leg off unless I see what you can do. Well, you go ahead. It's your neck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think I'll start by getting acquainted with that Palomino. See if his disposition matches the look in his eye. <laughs> Oh, yes. You've had a real good year, Ben. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Expect to have an even better one next year. You know, that north pasture, where we've got it all cleared and fenced, and that means I'll be able to double my herd of feeders. Uh, providing, of course, you approve the loan application. Well, you're a pretty fair risk, Ben. Sorry, right, busting in on this, boys, but uh, there's been an accident. Ben, is a fellow that you brought into Daryl to work in the stable? Uh, excuse me. Clear him away. Clear him away. Give him some air. All right, back up and give the doc some room here. There's that big Palomino, Ben. He pawed and stomped him before he could even get a rope on him. It took five of us to pull him out of there. Where's the doc? Oh. Ben, it's his back, I'm afraid. 
I guess I finally took on a job that was too big for me. Take it easy, Jesse. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. I think I went and got myself killed. I can't. I can't leave Sonny. He, he needs me to take care of him. Uh, Jesse, you're going to be all right, here. Mr. Cartwright. Tell Sonny. Tell him. Tell him what, Jesse? Sonny, let's, let's go home. Yeah, maybe, maybe Jesse's back there waiting for me. Where's Jesse? Sonny. Sonny, listen to me. Now, listen very carefully. Jesse's dead. He's gone, Sonny. Gone? Oh, no. Uh, no, he wouldn't leave me. He ain't never left me alone. I ain't never been alone since I met Jesse. Sonny, you ain't alone now. You, you take care of me, and I'll, I'll try to take care of you. All right. Good. Let's go. Come on. Roy, he was overcome with grief and shock, and he didn't know what he was doing. Now, Ben, I don't question that. But the fact is that he did cause Daryl Brightman a considerable loss. Well, I told... Now, I told Daryl that you agreed to stand good for the damages, and Daryl said he wouldn't press charges. Well? But I still feel that I've got to take Sonny into custody, that it ain't just safe leaving him run around loose. 
He's not running around loose. He's right here in the Ponderosa with us. That's because he's big and weak-minded. That's not a crime, you know. He'll be perfectly safe right here until we find someone who will take responsibility for him. And supposing you don't find nobody? I went through Jesse's things. I found that ticket. That must be the carnival that they worked at last fall. Well, it's at least a start, but, man, it's going to take a long time to run this down. Meanwhile, what kind of a guarantee do you have that Sonny ain't going to fly off the handle again and maybe cause the kind of damage that money can't pay for? Roy, he is not dangerous. He, he's a child. All right, Ben. I'll leave him here. And I hope you're right. Ben, I will do my best to track down his carnival outfit. Hope you have some luck, Roy. Cuss out loud. I'd better go on in there and talk to Sonny. What's the matter now? Dad Bernie Joe, I feel sorry for him, but confound it, I got my work to do, too. I know, I know, but he won't listen to me. All right, I'll talk to him. What you doing, Sonny? I have to go find Jesse. He's been gone so long, I... I just know something's happened to him. Ah, just hold on, man. Just hold your horses. Sonny, you remember what Jesse told you about me, I mean? About you listening to me just like it's him telling you? Remember? I remember. Yeah. Well, good. Because I'm telling you now, just like Jesse would, don't go running off nowhere. But Jesse might need me, Oz. No. No, he don't. I can tell you for sure he don't. But I can tell you for sure I do. I need your help right now, that wagon wheel out there. If I help you with it, then can I go? Well, we'll, we'll talk about it after a while. But right now, let's get on that wagon wheel. Maybe you can show me what I'm doing wrong. Come on. Sunny sleep? Yeah. Did you have any luck with Roy Coffee trying to find that carnival? No, not yet. You have a rough time? So so. It's kind of rough keeping him busy, you know. Got him painting things that don't need to be painted and fixing things that don't need to be fixed. Even with it all, he ain't happy, Paul. It's like he ain't he ain't got a friend in the world. I know. I know it. But it'll work out. I know it'll it'll work out. You better get yourself some rest. Yeah. I reckon we all need a little. This whole yeah. thing's kind of been upset, ain't it? All right. Good night. Jesse? Is is that you, Jesse? Jesse, where are you? Jesse. Jesse, where are you, Jesse? 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 Jesse, where are you? Sonny. Something wrong? I heard Jesse's voice, but I can't find him. Well, Sonny, it, Jesse, Jesse's gone. He must have been dreaming. Oh, he was calling to me. Sonny, it's late. You better get back to sleep. I heard him just as plain as anything. It must have been a dream, like I said. Come on, my dad.
You all right now? I'm not sleepy anymore. Well, it'll be, it'll be time to get up pretty soon. Now you gotta get some rest. I'm not sleepy. Well, I guess, I guess maybe I'm not sleepy either. When is Jesse coming back for me? Well, that's one of those uh, unborn tomorrows that uh, you and Jesse don't like to think about, is it? Yeah. Oh, it sure is peaceful and quiet, isn't it? I can see now why you like to sleep out here. Jesse and me don't like to be cooped up. We want to see the stars. They sure are bright, aren't they? Sometimes I used to think that, that I could just reach up and touch them. Feels as if we could almost do it, doesn't it? Hey, Sonny. Did you, uh, did you sleep outside a lot when you were a little fella? Did your folks let you sleep out a lot? I can't remember. When you were a boy, uh, I know you, you liked to go fishing a lot. <laughs> uh, do you remember wading in bare feet in the, the cold creek? Feel that mud oozing up through your toes, huh? Did you ever see a salmon swim up a waterfall? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's uh, really something, isn't it? Sonny, don't you remember anything about your folks, a brother or a sister or a funny uncle, anybody? There was this funny man at the carnival, Scotty. He was a clown. He, he used to paint his face all different colors, and he'd dance around real crazy, falling and everything. And he used to take a penny and make it disappear right in front of your eyes. He was a funny man. He used to cough a lot. Uh, and he used to sometimes late at night cry. And he didn't know anybody else was awake in the tent. But I remember, I remember his crying. Jesse told me not to tell Scotty anything about it. And why would a clown cry at night? Well. I don't know. I guess maybe because he had a reason to. I suppose every man does sometime in his life. Well, you get yourself some rest now. Mr. Cartwright, would you read to me the way Jesse does? Then to the rolling heaven itself I cried. Asking, what lamp had destiny to guide her little children stumbling in the dark? A blind understanding, heaven replied.
How's it going? Starving. Cheese over here, beef over here. Yeah, good. Save time. What's up? You don't want to come in, boy. He ain't hungry or something. Well, he's got to eat. Get him in here. Well, Hoss said he didn't want to come in. He's not I know what Hoss said. Now, come on, get him in. Today, aren't you? Oh, I know I shouldn't have yelled that way. I'm worried about Sonny. I'm real worried. I tell you, he, he knows deep down, he knows that Jesse's dead. Sure as I'm sitting here, but he just won't face up to it. When he does face up to it. I'll tell you one thing. It's the last time we take any strays into this house. I just... Hey, Paul. Sonny ain't out there. I looked all over. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. He ain't no place to be found. All right, let's start looking for him. That's no use, Pa. There's no telling where he might be by now. But he couldn't have gotten very far on foot. But we don't even know what direction he went in. No luck, huh? No. I went all the way up to the head of Release Creek, and then back down through Mesquite Canyon. No sign of him nowhere. Well, he could be in the woods on the other side of the creek. Well, if he did, it'll take more than the three of us to find him. Yeah, well, we'd better tell Roy Coffee. I was just fixing to ride out your place. Oh? Ben, I got a telegraph from Marshall down in Arizona. Sonny is wanted for murder. What? That's right. It seems that just before they left their last carnival job, Jesse got into a kind of a hard set two with the boss roused about. Sonny waited in to help him before anybody could stop him. He broke the fellow's neck. So I have no other choice than to lock Sonny up and hold him for extradition. Well, Roy, you're gonna have to find him first. What? Sonny ran away this morning.
Why'd you kill him? He didn't mean no harm. You shouldn't have done it. You reckon he's armed, Ben? No, I don't think so. Thought he is dangerous. Well, look, I, I figure we ought to... We ought to split up into three groups. It's a good idea. Uh, each one of us will go with, with a group. Uh, how about uh, you and Bill and you and myself? Fine. And if any of you men run into him alone, use your own judgment. Don't take no chances. We don't want to lose nobody. Yeah, well, try to talk him into giving himself up without a fight. Jesse. What did you call me? Is your name Jesse? No, it's Jamie. What's yours? Sonny. Have you been waiting? Nope. Fishing. Haven't caught nothing, though. Do you like to go wading? I let the mud ooze between your toes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Do you live around here? No. I, I got to go to Oregon. Did you ever see a salmon? Salmon? It's a fish. And it can swim up a waterfall. Aw, uh, you're just joshing. Oh, no, no, no. It, it really can. See, that's why I'm going to, to Oregon. I got to see him. No luck, huh? Nothing. What about you? Well, let's try on down by the creek. Busted. We ran into a giant of a man. Out of his mind. Tore into us like a bear. He grabbed old Ed up and flung him over there like he was a doll. Sonny? 
Do you have to go home? No, I have to go to Oregon. Do you want to go with me? Better not. I want you to go with me. I don't want to be alone. Gee, I don't think my ma would let me. What you got there? Something. Something better than rocks and gold and everything else. Gee, could I see it, please? Nope. Not less than you say you'll go with me to Oregon. All right. I... I'll go with you. How far is it to Oregon, anyway? First, you gotta... you gotta promise. I promise to hope to kick a frog and die. Gee, a gun. A real gun. Sure, there's lots of deer up here. Sonny, let me down. Let me down, Sonny. I better be getting home. My ma will worry if I don't. Hey, do you want to come to our house for supper? No, no, we got to go to Oregon, remember, Jesse? Don't call me that. That's not my name. Come on, Jesse. We got a long way to go. Stop, Sonny. That hurts. You all right, Jesse? Come on, Jesse. Let's go. Just a little ways farther, and, and we'll make camp up there, and we'll look at the stars. Jesse, you know the way. Please. All right. Just a little bit farther. Gosh, Sonny, I'm tired. Okay, Jesse. We'll rest. Any trace of them, Bill? Nothing. Well, it appears to me that we... Wait a minute. Well, look yonder. and left no tracks in them rocks. Sonny, my mom will skin me alive if I don't get home pretty soon. Read to me, Jesse. Read those pretty things that you always do. How many times do I got to tell you my name ain't? Please. I don't read so good. Come on, Jesse, please. You think they're up there? That's Sheriff Coffee. Is he looking for you? Did you do something bad? No, I never. No. Yes, you did. You did something bad. And he's going to lock you up in jail. No, I never did, Jesse. I'm not, Jesse. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I just want to go home. Don't worry, Jesse. 
they're not going to get us. I won't let them get us. Jesse, guns scare people. I'll scare them away. He's been shooting at us, Paul. He's firing in the air. Yeah. They're still there. Jesse, they're still there. Hey, Bill. But he's got a gun and the kid, too. I know. He doesn't know how to use that gun. Let's move up on him. No, Jesse, no, don't leave me now, Jesse. It's it's just over the hill, Jesse. I know it is. We can be there in time for sunset. Please, just just a little ways longer, Jesse. Sonny? Jesse! Jesse, don't go! Stay away from me! Jesse's gone. But he wouldn't leave me for long. He'll come back and get me. And then we'll, we'll watch those old salmon flop. <laughs> and we'll lead the good life. Just like he always told me. Just like he always said. Ben, take a boy in town, please. and you get the light stuff. Oh, brother, I figure you need the exercise. After all, you got a little weight problem. The only weight problem I got right now is in my two hands. <laughs> Morning, horse. Joe. Hey, how you doing? Morning, Bill. How's it going? Well, all right, I guess. Sure be glad when Sheriff Coffey gets back from St. Louis. Been nothing but trouble since he left here. coming to. Yeah, I heard it's getting sort of wild. Wild? I haven't had a decent night's sleep in two weeks. You need any help, Bill? No, that's what I'm getting paid for. Forty a month and meals. See you, boys. Hey, you think we ought to go on and give him a hand anyway? Yeah, Bill knows what he's doing. If he needs some help, he'll call us. Come on, let's get the rest of that hardware. I was afraid you were going to say that. Yeah, right between the eyes. <laughs> Don't give us a drink, huh? <laughs> then you won't be needing these gloves. <laughs> and you won't be needing these head either, right? <laughs> Please, fellas. <laughs> hey, hey, just tried to give him a free ride like the other one, right? Yeah. Break it up. Hey, keep your nose out of this, Depp. 
We're just even in the score this squirt here for not giving us any drinks. Huh? Yeah. They, they already had more than they could handle when they came in. Come on, put me Well, you're gonna cool your heels in jail a while. You're under arrest, Dave. The rest of you fellows are giving you a break. I tail it on out of here. Now, what do you have to say about it, hmm? Yeah, old Depp. Why don't you wake up and we'll talk it all over, huh? Dave. He's dead. What do you mean he's dead? Hey, Depp. Hey, get up. Get up! See? You all alone? Where's everybody? Well, Deputy Hacker, he took uh, Haas and little Joe. They rode out about an hour ago, trying to pick up the kid's trail. They got me from the stable to guard a prisoner here. Right. Listen, uh, uh, would you like to see him? Yeah. You know, I've seen quiet one, but this boy takes the prize. Hello, young fellow. Uh, I'm Ben Cartwright, and this is Mayor Garrett. We'd uh, like to talk to you for a minute. You better tell us where the rest of those boys are hiding. Amos, leave me alone with him for a bit, will you? Cliff. You realize how much of a pickle you're in. You and your friends killed a man. You put an end to a human life. How do you think I feel, Mr. Cartwright? I ain't been able to think of anything else since. What about your friends? Think of them. How do they feel? Hunted like animals. What do you want from me? Why are you here anyway? I'd like you to tell me where your friends are. Now, look, I, I know that Dave Morrissey and Chuck Wilson are implicated with you. There were two other fellas. Where are they? I ain't telling you nothing, so get out of here and leave me alone. I'm told that you haven't any parents. Is that right? Sure, I'd like to help you. How, by turning me into a yellow-bellied tattletale? By getting me to sell out my friends? No, I'm not trying to get you to sell out your friends. I'm trying to get you to help your friends. Look at me. Look at me, Cliff. Now, I know that you fellas didn't deliberately go out to murder a man. I know that only one fella struck that blow. Well, the bartender told us that. So, uh, if you would tell us where the other fellas are, we, we could bring them in and... I could promise you a fair trial. Leave me alone. Now, Cliff. Leave me alone. I ain't gonna tell you anything. I ain't gonna tell anybody anything. What's happened? Who's been shot? Hurry up and get the doctor. Yeah. Sit him down there. I'll get his leg up. Ben, come quick. Easy. Looks like it's broke, Pike. Set Hoss for the doc. What happened? Now, Tom tried to talk those kids out of the rocks at Crown Canyon. 
They shot them and then scouted like a bunch of quail. I think I winged one of them, Ben. Them dang fool kids. Whenever you put on a badge, some young whippersnapper is bound to try and put a bullet in you. He's going to be out of commission for a while. Well, that does it. Beatings, robberies, hurrahing the town, and now this. Ben, I'm calling an emergency session to the city council, and I want you to be there. With Roy Coffee away, we need a new peace officer in this town, and I mean right now. The shooting of Deputy Hacker and the death of Deputy Harris dramatically demonstrate our problem. And so I say, if the only thing that sweeps clean is a new broom, then let us get that new broom and get it fast. And with Roy Coffey bogged down in St. Louis until that murder trial is over, Virginia City is in desperate need of a new law enforcement, the kind of law officer who can not only maintain order, but restore order. Now I'm talking about lawmen like Bear River Tom Smitty, Wild Bill Hickok, and Wyatt Earp. I have just such a man in mind. And in exercising my power of office, I wired him to come to Virginia City to accept the post of sheriff. Well, who do you have in mind, Amos? You'll see his name on this message of acceptance. West Dunn. West Dunn, gentlemen. One of the great lawmen of the West. A man whose reputation for cleaning up bad towns has made him a living legend. I'm convinced he's the man we need. Hey, let's take a look at this. It says, Wes Dunn, the Beau Saber of the West, the dauntless lawman. Beau what? Beau Saber. French phrase, means a perfect swordsman. <laughs> a little melodramatic, but makes a good story. Hey, look over here. Look at this. Picture Wes Dunn with Wild Bill Hickok. Take a look at this, Pa. Hmm? It said, these two men single-handedly cleared the trails from Dodge City to Abilene. Look at that. Hey, pause. Is this Wes Dunn really that tough? Well, that's, uh, that's what they say. <laughs> we'll find out when he gets here. I'm kind of anxious to meet him. I think Mayor Garrett's right. I think it's the kind of man we need around town. He's tough, aggressive. He shoots first and asks questions later. That's a strange way for you to be talking. Now, what's so strange about it? Tom Hacker and Bill Harris were friends of yours, weren't they? Well, of course, but... Well, what happened was regrettable, but you don't change a whole method of law enforcement because of one incident. Well, they tried to talk to the Morrissey bunch. Where'd they get them? Well, Joe, you... That's the risk they took when they decided to become peace officers. Well, for $40 a month in meals, I don't think they ought to have to take that risk. Well, they don't have to take it. They decided to. Well, I think they made the wrong decision then. He's pretty riled up, Amy. Yeah, well, the whole town's riled up. Yeah. Paul, what's, what's this West Dunn going to do about it? I don't know. It's going to be something. According to this, he's the toughest peace officer in the country. I so solemnly swear. Congratulations, Sheriff. How about a few words from our new sheriff, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not much for words, gentlemen. But I will tell you this. I came here to do a job, and to do it right, I must have the power. I will brook no interference, tolerate no undue criticism. I will do things my way, at my own pace, on my own grounds. The law is the law and will be upheld. I hope this is clear to everyone. Well, that's, that's well said, Sheriff. Uh, I think we've got ourselves a real lawman in Virginia City. <laughs> And I'm afraid I'm not much for ceremonies either, gentlemen. So I know you'll excuse me. I've got a lot to get started on. Oh, uh, uh, Sheriff Dunn, I'd like to have you meet one of our most distinguished citizens, Mr. Ben Cartwright, owner of the Ponderosa Ranch. Yes, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, we've heard a great deal about you too, Sheriff Dunn. Uh, my son, Hoss, my son, Joseph. Yeah, I reckon we know about everything we just know about you, Sheriff. Little Joe must have read a half hundred <laughs> books about you. <laughs> Has he really? Yeah. yeah, well, sort of. I... I used to think about being a peace officer. Well, I'd better get some peace officer and done myself and start earning my keep around here. Well, we'll get out of your way. Congratulations. Good luck. Bye, fellas. Bye, so Mayor. So Mayor. Now, first things first, Mr. Mayor. I'll want a curfew for 9 o'clock beginning tonight. Curfew? That's what I'll need if you want me to do the job right. 
I want the riffraff off the streets and the citizens in their homes where they can't get hurt. Don't you think a curfew is a bit extreme? I mean, it's, it's not good for business. Extreme times call for extreme measures. I want that curfew, Mayor. Very well, Sheriff. I'll have an immediate resolution drawn up for review by the council. Mr. Mayor, as soon as I'm provisioned and ready, I'm going out to bring in the boys that killed your deputy. I won't have time to sit around while the council scratches its head. I want you to start exercising your mayoral powers and start backing me up. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, you heard. I'm the new law here. Now, come on over here where I can talk to you, fella. I ain't got nothing to tell you. <laughs> now, I haven't got time to waste. I want the names of your friends. I want to know just where I can find them. <laughs> All right. I'll do it any way you like. Cut yourself. Over there, little buddy. Oh, little buddy. Don't move, Hoss. You never saw me. Just get out of here. Chuck, I did see you. I saw you real good. Now, buddy, you're hurt. Come on. No, please, Hoss. You know me. I never meant to hurt anybody. Chuck, the only one you're hurting yourself now. Come on. Don't, Hoss. I ain't gonna go back there. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. I don't think you're going to. mean to her. Hey, horse! Horse! Hey, horse! 
Hey, Kevin, he's strong, Ben. Same wound in a weaker man, he wouldn't have any chance at all. I want you to stay with him. The great danger now is from hemorrhaging. You'll be back in the morning, won't you? First thing. Take care of him now. Night, Ben. Little Joe. Night. Light the fire. I'm, I'm going to stay with Hoss. Right. Mr. Godright. Oh, sorry if I startled you. I found the door open. I heard in town about your son. I rode out. Thought maybe I could talk to him. I'm afraid you won't be able to. He's unconscious. I'm sorry to hear that. I better get to him. Mr. Godright. Maybe I can cheer you up a bit anyway. I think it was one of the Morrissey bunch that shot your son. Well, I caught up with one of them. Punk named Fred Roberts. You know him? Yes, I... He's the son of some old friends. I caught up with him at his mother's place. The fool tried to shoot it out with me. He lost. You saying he's dead? That's right. Oh, when your son regains consciousness, you'll let me know, won't you? Mr. Dunn. You sure that's a Morrissey bunch, huh? Pretty sure. I found some bloodstains leading away from where your brother was shot. So I guess Deputy Hacker was right. He must have clipped one of them. Well, I've got work to do. I'm going with you. No, I don't think so. Why not? You want him too badly. Your life will go off half-cocked. I can't take that chance. You're darn right I want him badly, mister. I got a brother lying upstairs with a bullet in him. I'm not going to sit around here and wait for the man who shot him to get away. Now, either I go with you or without you. It doesn't make any difference to me. You make up your mind. Get a rifle. I'll see you outside. Joe, I want you to get some hot. What do you think you're going to do? I'm going with West End. I don't want you to go. Bob, I'm not going to argue with you about this. I said I don't want you to go. Look, when my brother Hoss wakes up, what do you think is going to mean more to him? Seeing me sitting by his bedside or knowing I'm going out to find the man that bushwhacked him? How do you feel, son? A little bit woozy. Chuck. 
If I hadn't have tried to take his gun away from him, I wouldn't be in the shape I'm in right now. You get some sleep. Rest is the best thing for you, son. I can have me some more of that dream about them Vikings. I just put on them ships and let them drift out to sea. Cutright, you stay here. I'll go on in alone. I didn't come all this way to be left behind. Look, Cutright, I brought you along so I'd have a gun in back of me. Not in front of me, not to the side of me, but in back of me. There's a side entrance there. Cover it, huh? All right, you're in charge. for his gun. Which one was he? It was Paul Curtis. We'll send somebody back to pick him up. We still got work to do. sitting there all night. He needs to sleep, Doc. How you feeling, Oz? Well, I ain't gonna wrestle no bears this morning, but I am hungry. That's a good sign. Let's take a look at that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. Huh. Am I gonna live? Not over 60 or 70 more years. Providing you keep out of the way of any more bullets thrown in your direction. Ah, so you've got the constitution of a bull elephant. It's amazing. What's amazing? What's the matter? Your son. He's hungry. <sighs> That's good. What do you feel like having? Make it something light. Yeah, something light like a... T-bone steak about yay long, about yay thick. Like chicken broth. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have Hop Singh rustle something up. <sighs> oh, Ben. It was quite a stir in town this morning. West Dunn and Little Joe brought in another member of that bunch that killed Deputy Harris. Young Paul Curtis. Dunn killed him in a gunfight. What about Little Joe? Oh, he wasn't involved. Looks like Dunn's setting himself up as judge, jury, and executioner, doesn't it? Sure does, doesn't it? Ben, I, I heard about Hoss. How is he? It's gonna be all right. Come on in. Thank goodness. My prayers have been answered. I I fixed him a little something. Thank you. You've been 
enjoy that. Come on, sit down. Ben, I... I had a selfish reason for coming here. I need some money. Anything I can do for you, you know that. We've been neighbors for a long time. And friends. First my husband. Now my son. It's been too much. I want to go to my sister in Ohio. I can understand how you feel. No, you don't, Ben. You don't know how I feel. When Freddie came home that night, he threw himself into my arms. He was crying like he was a, a little boy again. He told me how sorry he was and how afraid. We talked for a long time. I finally convinced him that he should give himself up. And then we heard that voice. Duns. Ordering him out of the house. If Fred had agreed to give himself up, why did he try to shoot it out with Sheriff Dunn? But he didn't, Ben. Dunn shot him down as soon as he opened the door. He never even gave Freddy a chance to give himself up. The horse is fed and watered. They're outside. Why don't you go to the hotel and get some sleep? You've had a long night. I couldn't sleep anyway. I keep thinking about Paul Curtis. Listen, boy. Don't you waste your time worrying about it. That scum got just what he deserved. Look, Cartwright. You've got to understand criminals. Well, they look like us and talk like us, but they aren't, not by a long shot. They're a different breed altogether. Their minds work different, more like animals than humans. Now, when you deal with them like I do, you learn in a hurry. No quarter asked, I'm given. Either you kill them or they kill you. It's as simple as that. I know these kids are not hardened criminals. They did was wrong, but they got scared. I just wish they could have had another chance, that's all. Did they give Harris a chance? Deputy Hacker? Your brother? Joe. Once, I made a mistake. I was deputy to a... Marshal named Ned Patterson. I was new to the job. Ned Patterson was the best lawman I ever knew. I loved that old man. Well, one night, I, I picked up this kid who was drunk and raising cane in town. You know that kid? He, he broke down. He cried. I, I let him go. I felt sorry for him. Next night, that same kid shot Patterson in the back, killed him. I never forgot that mistake. Oh, would you mind taking that food into the prisoner, Joe? Cliff, brought you breakfast. Hey, Cliff? Just put it on the floor, Joe. Hey, what's the matter? Are you sick or something? 
tried to escape. Jump me when I come in to question him. Ain't that right, boy? Yes. I, I tried to jump. I'm going out for a little while. When I get back, we've got work to do. Hey, you know, you really ought to try to eat something. Make you feel better. This beef stew's not the... I'll get you a doctor. Don't you listen to me. I've got something I want to tell you. That guy, that sheriff, he's, he's out to kill all of us. He ain't human. Joe, I, I know what we did was wrong. We ran because we were scared. And I'm, I'm ready to face any punishment I deserve, even hanging. But it ain't right. Just killing us, is it? No, Cliff, it ain't right. The only reason I'm still alive is because he thinks I know where Chuck and Dave are hiding. Do you know where they are? I think so. But I wouldn't tell him no matter how much he beat me. I told him where Fred Roberts and Paul Curtis were. I killed him. Joe, listen to me. I, I want to tell you. Maybe if I tell you, Chuck and Dave will have a chance. There's a place we used to go to as kids. It's at the north end of a little lake. It's called Basin Lake. You know it? Yeah, I know where it is. Well, at the north end, it's kind of wooded. We always used to talk that we got in trouble, we'd, we'd meet up there and, and head for Oregon. You think they're still there? We agreed to wait there for four days. If all of us didn't show up, then we'd move on. You take it easy, I'll get you a doc. Joe, find him before he does, promise me. I will. Miss Mrs. Roberts said he murdered her son. Ben, you only have the word of an hysterical mother. Now, how do you think that's going to stand up in court against a man like West Dunn? Well, I think that's up to a jury to decide, isn't it? Look, you can't let him go around using that badge as a license to kill. What do you want me to do? Get rid of him. Get rid of him right now and forever. Turn the whole thing over to the prosecuting attorney. Oh, Joe, what's the matter? West Dunn's found out where Dave Morrissey and Chuck are hiding. I think he's gone up there to kill him. Maybe you better get a doctor over the jail. Our Mr. Dunn just about beat Cliff to death. Well, does that satisfy you? Hold him, Jeff. Me. Where are they? Are they coming? No, they're not coming. They're dead. Dead? Fred and Paul. Fred's mother said he tried to give himself up, see? And just as he was coming out the door with his hands in the air, a new sheriff they brought in cut him down right where he was. West Dunn. Y you mean he won't let us give ourselves up? Chuck, that lawman is out to kill us. He's not out to take us in. Now, how's your leg? It's bad, Dave. Well, can you ride? I can try. Well, you better be able to, because we gotta run, and we gotta keep running and running till we get all the way to Oregon. Now, come on. Somebody's coming.
Done. Come on. We'll hide in that brush back there. Something's got him stirred up. Yeah, is it those two boys or is it Wes Dunn? There's only one way to find out. Dunn didn't catch up with him here. Hey, Pot Tracks. One of them's dragging a leg. They go up this way. Set of tracks here. One of them split up. One of them could have gone over the rocks. And one of them could be carried too. You want to split? Yeah. I think I better. I'll follow this track. Okay, okay. I'll take the rocks. Watch yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm at the end of my rope. Honest Dave. Dave. Yeah. You know, if I could just go back these four days, do it all over. So forget it, will you? I'm scared. Yeah, well, so am I. Did you ever think of that? Chuck, you, uh, you got your gun, right? Yeah. I got it.
You do that, Dave. Okay, I'll, uh, and I'll see you again. I wish I'd never seen one of them things. I purely, honestly do, Mr. Cartwright. It's all over now, boy. Drop the gun. Joe, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you right in the belly if you don't stay where you are. I told you to drop the gun. Joe, please don't make me shoot you. I'm telling you. Stay where you are. I'm giving you a choice. You drop that gun or I'll kill you right now. Joe. I swear to you, I'll kill you. All the way on the ground. Joe, he, he tried to kill me. I, I didn't have any choice. I had to get him. I had to. Joe, don't you see? I'm telling you. I didn't have one choice. Don't you see that? There's a judge and jury waiting for you. Let's go. Take about a half hour to fill the rest of this order. Yeah, that's all right, Bob. Take your time. I'll be back in a little while. Right. It's very tough to get three in a row. Ah, that's really remarkable shooting, though. Uh, you two fellas must be about the best gun hands in town, huh? Yeah, we're pretty good. Just one better. Stand right over there. Now, uh, who's that? His name's Joe Cartwright. 
Hey, little Joe. Hi, Pete. Somebody over there I want you to meet. Uh, who is he? He says he's from St. Louis. His name's Fitz. I don't win. Hi, Joe. This is uh, little Joe Cartwright, Mr. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. My pleasure. Nice to see you. I'll show you how it's really done. It's the best in the territory. Uh, it'd be a privilege to see you in action, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, that is, if uh, you don't mind going along with an Easterner's whim. <laughs> you see, I, uh, I've always been fascinated by the West, especially the way you fellas handle your guns. Hey, go ahead, Joe. There's still three bottles left. Uh, that's what I call a real shoot. I'd appreciate it if you let me buy you a drink, all of you. After a demonstration like that, I feel I owe you something. All right, you got a deal, but I'm buying. All right, whatever you say. Seems like this better come night. <laughs> Listen, I better get to the bank before it closes. Uh, don't forget to pick up those clothes of new rope we ordered. Right, right. Hey, Paul, I'll huh? meet you over Silver Dollar. Little Joe promised to buy us a beer before we went home. And I don't want to let an opportunity like that get clean away. Neither do I. See you in about 20 right. minutes. <laughs> Yes, sir, you boys sure know how to handle a gun. It was so fast, I couldn't even see it. Thanks, Sam. much of a whiskey drink. Slows you down, huh? Yeah, to a crawl. I can understand how it'd be dangerous for a man like you. You need razor-sharp reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> you find that amusing, sir? You're a dude, aren't you, mister? I'm from St. Louis, yes, sir. Uh, from St. Louis, I guess that does make you a dude, all right. But these young men have been taking me in hand. They've been showing me how a six-gun is handled. Mister, you don't go to a kindergarten class to learn about a six-gun. Look, we're just having a nice, friendly beer here in a public bar. So why don't you go about your business, huh? Hey, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Yeah, I get by. Go on. Show them how many notches you've got on your gun. Well, that's the way it's done, isn't it? One notch for every man that you've killed? Come on, how many notches do you have? Go ahead, kid. Show them how many notches you've got, huh? Don't you watch it, mister. Oh, oh, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Kid, you've got a lesson to learn. Gentlemen, 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 please. Please, this, this bar is too crowded for any gunplay. Now, take your quarrel outside. All right. I'll meet you at the warehouse at the other end of town, where you bottle babies were playing. I'll be there tomorrow morning at 6.30. I'll be there. Good boy, Joe, you can take him easy. Sure, Joe, he's just another old son. Well, fan. you got yourself a real gunfight challenge, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, but I suppose that doesn't bother a tough young rooster like you, huh? Just between the two of us, how many notches do you have on your gun? 
Look, we will lay off that stuff now. Ah, uh, you don't want to brag, huh? Hey, you fellas tell me. How many men has the kid got to his credit? Ooh, how many is it now, Joe? Ten or eleven? Ten or eleven? Hey, that's really something. It's Wynn's idea of a joke. A joke? Oh. Well, from the way you fellas were talking before, I thought... Oh, I see. All that uh, was just talk. What do you mean, talk? You've seen little Joe shoot. Oh, yeah, bottles, yes. But it's quite a different thing when your target can shoot back. Huh? Isn't that right, Mr. Cartwright? I'm willing to lay a little bet that Mr. Cartwright won't even show tomorrow morning. Why don't you shut your mouth? matter with him? All I said was that I was willing to bet money that he wouldn't show at the fight tomorrow, that was all. Why don't you put money where your mouth is, mister? How's $5,000? Can you match it? I ain't got that kind of money. Well, how much you got? Hmm? Order any pop. Yeah. 30 bucks? 30 bucks. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, Sam Tucker's the name, friend. <laughs> well, I wonder if you'd mind holding the bet, Mr. Tucker, please. Why not? Be glad to. Now, that's $30 that little Joe doesn't show. Or if he does, that the other fellow takes him. Hmm? Anybody else want to get in on the action? Huh? I got $5,000 here. Hey, Who fish. wants to bet on... I'll take 50 on Joe Cartwright. All right, Pete. That's 50 on little Joe Cartwright. Yeah, Mr. Tucker. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, one at a time. One at a time. How much is gone? One hundred dollars. Fifty 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 What's going on here? Did you heard? Heard what? Little Joe's been challenged at a gunfight in the morning. What? That fella there is taking bets. Joe won't even show up. I don't understand it. Paul, I left him less than an hour ago. How could he get in so much trouble this quick? Well, we're going to find that brother of yours and find out. All right, here's that. Hey. of the 5,000. Mr. Tucker has all your bets written down. And the last of this money goes for drinks on me. So step up. Hey! Hey! Let's go. I'll take a beer with you. Beer with you. Don't worry, honey. Business will pick up later tonight. Oh, no, no. I wasn't worrying about that. <sighs> Something else. That fell at the bar? Yeah. I knew him a long time ago. He didn't seem very happy seeing you. What's his name? Dan Taggart. I really don't know why I should even bother about it. I mean, after all, it's been a long time ago, and it's dead and forgotten. But, uh, I guess a girl never really forgets a man that she, that she knew when she was young, and... Does she, Martha? She does if she's got good sense. I need a black king. Well? Not a thing, Paul. Boy, it just don't make sense. There's got to be some sort of mistake. Well, there's been a mistake, all right. It was your brother who made it. I'll use check and see if he's been to the general store. I'll, I'll ask down at the blacksmith's. Paul. There's got to be some sort of explanation. Let him make it. First of all, let's find him and check in there. Oh. What? 
He ain't over there. Reckon he could have headed back to the ranch? Oh, I don't know. He certainly got this talent on the floor. You know what that blacksmith wanted to do? What? You want to give me odds in the gunfight? You go up to the bank, see if he's there. I'll check into the warehouse. He should have been finished loading that wagon an hour ago. He should have been doing a lot of things this afternoon. All he succeeded in doing is getting himself into a peck of trouble. I'll meet you back here. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that's it, Joe. All right. Thank you. All right. What? I'm looking all over for you. Do you realize you have this whole town in an uproar? Do you know what's going on at the saloon? Yes, sir, I know. Well? Oh, it's just a little misunderstanding, that's all. Oh, just a little misunderstanding, that's all. A gunfight is a little misunderstanding. Now, what's it all about? Well, a fellow over in a bar gave me a hard time, and I lost my temper. You lost your temper? I'll, I'll take care of it. And how do you propose doing that? I'll go, I'll go over to the hotel and I'll apologize to him. All right. And as soon as you've done that, you get yourself up to the Ponderosa and stay there. Is that clear? Yes, sir, that's clear. I'll be home as soon as I can. Maybe I ought to go with you just to make sure. I can apologize to him alone, I promise, and I'll be home. Hey, Joe, we've been looking all over for you. You ought to see the action over at the Silver Dollar. Well, Sheriff Coffee would have a fit if you were here. Everybody in town's betting their pay on you. And one pull of that trigger boy can make us all rich. Why don't you two grow up? What do you mean, grow up? We better pay on you, Joe. Hey, uh, I mean, you are gonna show up, aren't you? No, I'm not gonna show up. You think I'll have a gunfight over nothing? But he challenged you, and you said you'd meet him. So what? Well, like Pete said, we all got our pay on you. Right, fine. Maybe you two will know better next time. Hey, Joe, look. I mean, all the, you know, all your friends, the hands at the ranch, the people you know, they're all betting on you. You don't, you don't show up, and you know what they're gonna say. What, that I'm scared? Look, I don't have to prove anything to the people in this town. You still gotta live here. If you don't show up, you know people are gonna talk. And they're gonna say you're a coward. You know that that's what everybody's gonna say. Joe, you still around? I thought perhaps you would have deemed it uh, advisable to stay away from town for a few days. Uh, but uh, perhaps your friends inside are right. You do have courage. Just what's your game, Fitz? Game? Oh, uh, the bets. Yeah, the bets. Well, I just know a sure thing when I see it. A chance to pick up a little quick money, as they say. On my life or the other man's? Now look, I didn't start the fight. You did. Uh, this code that uh, you all live by out here. That is very honorable, very noble, and very stupid. Why shouldn't someone make a good use of it? Well, there isn't going to be any fight. Fine. I win either way. And you lose either way. Yes, it's quite simple. Tomorrow afternoon, I'll be on the stage to San Francisco. And you'll either be dead or disgraced. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Is what I hear right? Uh, you're going to be in a gunfight? Who told you about that? It's all over town. Everybody's talking about it. I even put a few dollars on you myself. Yeah, you're a great big hero now, Joe. Look, Joe. I got something here you can use. Well, I've already got a holster, thanks. Joe. Not like this. I make it up special for some fella. Last year, he never come back to pick it up. I think maybe he got himself killed. <laughs> I 
I'd let you have it for a very good price. No, thanks. Joe, this is special. It can't grab or bind. <laughs> it's got a spring inside. Soon as you touch the gun, it pushes it right up in your hand. It'll maybe give you an edge of half a second, Joe. I'm not interested. Joe, it could make all the difference in the world for just a few dollars. I told you I'm not interested. Yeah. Mr. Taggart? I wanted to talk to you. All right. Talk. Well, look, the whole thing had happened in a bar this afternoon. We both lost our tempers. Why don't we just call it that and forget it, huh? You trying to make a fool out of me, kid? Look, mister, I'm trying to square this thing. Now, it was just a spilled drink, nothing more. Certainly not worth a shooting. I made my play, boy. In public. I'll be at that warehouse in the morning. Oh, come on, this doesn't make sense. The whole thing is ridiculous. Is it? You may be willing to let this town call you a coward, boy. But I'm not. Nobody calls me a coward, mister. You just be there. Now beat it. What do you want? To see you. All right. You've seen me. Dan, may I come in? It's been a long time. Drink. You do drink. Or only, uh, only professionally. I drink when I'm asked, if I want to. Dan, they say that you're going to fight that boy. They're right. Why? Well, I like to fight. Well, what's happened to you? Look, I didn't ask you any questions, did I? We're ten years older. 20 years wiser, or are we? Why did you come up here? To talk for the kid? No. Look, just drink your drink and get out. Forget that you ever saw me again. Dan, look at me. It's too late. Now, just get out. Sally, wait. Sally, I'm sorry. I really am sorry, Sally. It's been so long. I haven't forgotten a moment. I don't, I don't know what you ever saw in me, ever. I saw the most handsome man I ever knew, and the nicest, and I was... You were beautiful, so beautiful. I remember the first time I ever saw you. 
was at a church social with your ma and pa. You were hiding behind a, a great big caramel fudge cake. <laughs> Remember? That silly cake, how could I forget? What happened to us? Why didn't you come back? I was coming back, Sally. I was coming back with the Parsons. Your father's three hired guns met us. The Parson told me to, to leave. At least until he had a chance to talk to your pa. Well, I rode. I rode for two days trying to lose him. But they followed. When I hit a town, I, I got drunk. Real drunk. That night I killed my first man. After that, how could I come back? With a posse on my neck? Oh, dear, I didn't know. I didn't know. I heard about you. And how your pa and the whole town chased you out like you was... Like you was an animal. Jane, the town didn't matter. None of that mattered to me. I, I just wanted you. I, I looked for you. I looked all over for you. I, I couldn't find you. you. I looked for you too, Sally. I looked. And the more I couldn't find you, the more I, or the more I drank and the more I killed. Dan, don't. It's over. Is it? And why are you here? Why are you here like this? Painted up like that? Dressed like that? Why am I here? Don't you see what we've become? Dan, I love you. I've always loved you. And I've waited. Sally, I wish, I wish we could. No. Oh, Sally. Hey, Joe. You talk to that fella? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what'd he say? I'd rather not talk about it now. What do you mean you'd rather oh, not? Leave me alone, Lee Austin. Joe! Joseph! He didn't feel like talking for. He went up to bed. Oh? Did he talk to that fella in town? Yeah, but I don't think he had much success from the way he acted. Oh, well, we'll just find out. Joseph? Did you uh, talk to that fellow in town? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what did he have to say? He wouldn't accept my apology. I have no choice now. You have no choice? What does that mean? You have no choice except to go into town and get yourself killed tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's right. Well, what kind of sense does that make? Well, it doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. But what are you going to do? Just turn and walk away from it? Yes, just turn and walk away from it. That takes courage, too. There's no dishonor in that. I can't do that. You can't. Do you realize what those so-called friends of yours are doing in town? They're placing money bets on your life. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. Now, you listen to me, young man. I don't want you to have anything to do with it. Just forget the whole thing. I'm a little old to be talked to like that. Then act your age. You stay here tomorrow. He'll ride out of town and the whole thing will be forgotten. Is that understood? So what happened, Paul? What happened? There's not going to be any gunfight. That's what happened.
you're going to be all right. Don't worry. Hoss, this was 30 years ago, and I was little Joe. I know what I'd be doing tomorrow. Yeah. I know what you'd be doing too, Paul. That, that's what makes that rub so tough, ain't it? You'd be going through with it. Yeah, foolish as it might be, I'd be gone. I was just up there telling him that he couldn't go. Five years ago, I locked the door on him. Kept him in his room. I treated him like a child. He's a man. I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid for him too, Paul. He's your son. But he's my brother. Hey, Paul. How would it be if, if I went up and talked to him? You could try. I will. We'll get some sleep, huh? I'll be up in a bit. Yes, sir. Good night, Paul. Joe, can I come in? Yeah, come on. Downstairs talking to Paul. He seemed pretty upset. Yeah, I know. I thought I'd come up and see if he wanted to talk. I guess everything's been said that there is to talk about. Yeah. That fella really rode you pretty hard, huh? Yeah, he sure did. Well, that burned it. I don't know how you feel. Man just naturally hates to get his pride hurt. But that burn it, Joe. It ain't worth getting killed over. No more lectures. I've been through that already tonight. Hey, maybe if I went into town and got my hands on that yahoo, he wouldn't be so happy to get himself in a gunfight, huh? Yeah, bro, that's all I need, to have you go in town and fight my battles for me. That'd really fix me up. Dad, burn it, Joe. You're my little brother. If anything was to happen to you, I'd... Yeah, don't worry. Nothing's gonna happen to me. You mean, you might not go through with it? I just don't know yet. I gotta, gotta think on it a little while. You can see that, can't you? Yeah, Dad Barnett, I can see it. I can understand it. But I don't like it none. Thanks. For what? For being my brother. Don't they ever go home? It's pay night. What time is it? About midnight. Pay night is a big night, Dan. Don't. I don't like hearing you talk that way. I have to live. Like that? Isn't there anything else you could do? I took what I could get. Stop it. I don't want you to go down there. With those drunken pigs. Sally. Don't leave. I don't want to be alone. 
Stay with me. Oh, Dad. Just talk to me. Sally. It's daylight. Oh, Dan. Is it time? Shh. Oh, Dan. Oh. You'd better go now. Oh, please, Dan, don't. I'll be leaving town in about an hour. One way or, or the other. I don't want you out there. Do you understand? No. no. You're still so beautiful. Who's the girl? That's none of your business. You've been up all night again, haven't you? Probably boozing it up with that shut up. What's gotten into you, Taggart? You know, you're getting jumpier every day. I'll tell you what's gotten into me. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of me. And of the stinking things I do. Sick, huh? I just remember what you were when I picked you up in Denver. At least I was clean. Clean? You're a two-bit gunfighter turning yourself into a bottle of booze. Someday I'm gonna put a fist right in that mouth of yours. Or a bullet through that fat skull. Now, just take it easy, Taggart. You get everything you want. You get all the money you need. 
You got an easy life. All I have to do is commit murder for it. Do you know what it's like killing a man? You think it gets easier, don't you? You're a coward, Fitz. You've never faced a man in your life. <laughs> Talking to you is like, it's like a rabbit trying to explain speed to a snail. Kid came up here last night. Trying to square it. Came to me trying to square it. Imagine that. Poor kid. He's going to get killed just to make you richer. You better watch out, Taggart. Or it might be you. You don't stop building that stuff. Yeah, you're right. Could be me someday. Some night, some ugly morning. I'm gonna meet some punk kid who's gonna take me. That'll be the end of it. Every crummy little town's got a boot hill for bums like you and me. Decent people, one place. Bums in Boot Hill. Rocks instead of flowers. Oh, don't worry, Harry. I'm gonna shoot that Cartwright kid as straight and as fast as I can. you have to pick that Cartwright kid. One of those other two would have been just as good. More like the usual loudmouth Claude you always get. Because that Cartwright kid has quite a following. Made it easier to take their money. Yeah, maybe a lot easier than it'll be to take him. You don't really think he'll show, do you? He'll show pride. Pride, that's what does it. That's what roped me in. The great code of the West. Face your man or sell out your self-respect. Yeah, that's what gets us all. Well, don't tear it down. It's made us a lot of money, you as well as me. The only difference is that I do the killing. 610. You better let me be there for five minutes before you show.
morning, Mr. Taggart. Well, gentlemen, little Joe Cartwright has just three minutes before he forfeits. Three minutes, gentlemen. Hey, Fitz, what's he trying to do? What? That is not the same gun rig he was wearing yesterday, pal. You'll have to ask him, friend. I just take the bets. And you're about to forfeit the whole thing. Two and a half minutes, gentlemen. There he is. There's Joe Cartwright. Give my 400. You think it was really worth it? Có thể là bác gái, con hiểu chưa? 
thế, thế, thế bình thường bình thường bình thường con gọi bác thành hay là chú thành bác ở bác giống như bác trang ấy bác là là anh bác là nhiều tuổi hơn bố mẹ thì con gọi là bác đúng chưa bác cũng có thể là bác trai cũng có thể là bác gái nhá bác trai hả con biết rồi ừ. nữa con thành 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 ở dưới nhà con chỉ gọi nó là em thôi học bác thấy chưa Chú tay nữa Thế con phải gọi là chú Thế nó là auto Thế nó là auto Chú nó buồn Sao lại không được Má Nhưng nhưng mà chú là 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 ít ít tuổi hơn bố với mẹ Không được Không được, sao lại không được Ai ai bảo không được Chú, chú, chú đi mua đấy Chú thành Má <cười> Má <cười> Bye bye.